Hi, welcome to this uh, part three series of what's new in SolidCamp 2024 SP2. We will start in another three minutes from now. We'll let people join in. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you very much for waiting. We are now ready to start. <clears throat> so I'm continuing from where I left off uh, last year. I'm uh, sorry, last week. I'm so sorry, uh, last week. Uh, I'm going to touch upon certain aspects of Pro3D HSM, and then we're going to move into the, uh, the next version of Pro3D HSM, which is in five axis. So we're going to start there, and then I'll uh, show you some other features that we have already implemented in 2024 of SolidCam. But one of the one of the biggest complaints that uh, we got over the last one to one and a half year, and we were figuring out uh, how to fix that. And I believe our development did an amazing job in fixing it in 2024 SP2. Few of you have already started using it, and I'm not yet sure if you have noticed it because it's it's mind blowing, okay? Because that was something that was, uh, you know, uh, hampering our day-to-day uh, -day work. There were complaints of the software's performance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the change that we made in 2024 is not a tangible change, something that we can uh, see on the as a feature, but it's basically something that you can definitely feel. So in 2020, late 2022, or even, even I can say the entire versions of 2022 and 2023, till SolidCamp 2024 SP1, we had issues about the dialog boxes opening up and not showing anything, or sometimes even not opening up for uh, 10, 12 seconds. Okay, and uh, we had some uh, bit of fixes in between, and but that was really not enough. 
So what you have uh, actually going to see in 2024 SP2 is that these dialog boxes load almost instantly. They don't wait. There's no waiting time. In fact, if I now go and add an operation and say um, pocket in 2.5D, okay, I still wait about two seconds for the dialog boxes to load for 2.5D operations. This was acceptable, but now let's see what happens when I load a SIM 5X operation dialog box. It's almost instant, no waiting, nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm not very sure everybody would have experienced this in 2024 SP2, but this dialog box loading is almost instant. You don't need to wait even for a second. It's like almost instant. So this is one of the standout things that uh, our development did in the last, I would say, uh, more than six to eight months. First of all, identifying the issue and then finding a way to fix the issue. So 2024 SP2 onwards, now the dialog boxes of all the five axis operations, Pro 3D HSM, Multiblade, or for that matter, any five axis and three axis. Uh, operations will load in a flash no waiting time absolutely whatsoever the dialog boxes will come up very quickly so that's the first improvement that uh, you will see in 2024 sp2 if you have already started working with it you would have already felt it if not please start working with the sp2 version <clears throat> moving ahead uh, last week I showed you a lot of things in Pro 3D HSR and Pro 3D HSM. We got into two problems. Those two problems have been taken up and we should have the fix very, very soon. So we don't have to even wait for that. The fixes will be, the fixes are actually on the way. Uh, moving further, I would like to show you some more things of Pro 3D HSM and then take you into the Pro 3D HSM's five axis capabilities. So, what I have here is a part which is a, looking like a mold insert, and uh, we would like to machine this using the Pro 3D HSM and Pro 3D HSR approach. So, what I have here is uh, uh, don't, uh, I'm, this is not a problem of solid cam. This looks to be a problem of my 4K display. Okay, I'm currently working on a 4K display, so probably that's the uh, reason. So I'm, I have already made a template and I would like to apply the template because I don't want to waste time in defining operations. So I'll grab the entire process template, the process that was used, and I'll apply it to uh, this particular part. <clears throat> okay. We have not defined in any of these operations the geometry. So I'll go to my first operation, I'll edit, and I'll apply the target. All other parameters I'm not going to check except for this parameter here. Yeah. This is 10,000. Let me save this and I'll calculate the first operation. Okay, no problem. So my first roughing is calculated. I'll uh, then go to my next rest roughing, which is using a smaller diameter tool. It's basically 10 corner radius one, so it's a bull nose tool. Uh, again here, I'll have to change this or I'll get an error. So let me save this and calculate. Okay, my rest roughing is calculated. Then I'm going to use a constant Z. Let's say I'm doing a semi-finishing and I would like to do, or I'm doing a finishing operation. And I would like to use a six diameter ball nose with the holder and uh, it's uh, 23 millimeters outside the holder. It's a 
shrink fit holder that I'm using. So I will go to the target. Uh, and okay, back to the tool again. And we need to reduce the speed rate. Save this. And let me calculate this operation. So here I'm using the uh, slope angle principle and I'm going from uh, 45 to 90. All those areas we are going to do constant Z uh, machining. The depth of cut is approximately about 0.2 millimeters on this part. So there would be some time for calculation. And also the fact that uh, we have used the holder, so it's going to use the dynamic holder collision checking. And it's going to eliminate areas or it will not calculate in the areas where the holder is colliding or the holder comes into collision range. So you can see that we don't have any toolpath here, okay? We don't have any toolpath. Some portion here, we don't have any toolpath. We don't have toolpath in this region here. Similarly, some portion here, we don't have the toolpath. And then we don't have the toolpath here in this region, okay? That's primarily because the holder is uh, colliding. So solid cam has trimmed off the areas and it's not giving us the option. Now, if you talk about solutions, what should be the next possible? Because I can't leave the part unmachined in this area and expect that somebody else will do something else. So I have to do that operations myself. So I have got a couple of options here and unfortunately both these options are not present inside solid cam. One is whatever areas were trimmed, I would like to have them as a tool path and then I will use a longer tool with a different kind of a holder and I would like to machine that. So that's the option number one. Option number two is, okay, you're not able to machine in some areas. Give me the boundaries, the 3D boundaries of the area because Pro 3D HSM now accepts 3D boundaries and I can use 3D boundaries to generate tool path in areas where there was, there was no tool path or the tool path was trimmed out. Unfortunately, at the moment, even this option is not available inside Pro 3D HSM. So what do we do then? But uh, because we need to machine this area and we can't leave this area unmachined, we'll have to find a way. Fortunately for us, inside Pro 3D HSM, and I think probably this is something unique, we have got an amazing option that allows us to fix this problem straight away. So what I'm going to do is I have got another tool path. I've just copied this tool path here, okay? This is just a copy. You can see this was uh, the first operation that I made a copy of that operation below here. I'll edit this. And here I have removed the holder. So just give me the tool path without the holder. But I want the tool path. First, let me take out this because it'll get an error otherwise. Okay, I want the tool path using stock, okay? That means solid cam will check for areas where the stock is already zero and eliminate the tool path completely from that area because it's already done. It will check what the previous tool path has done on the stock and it will trim off all the areas that are not needed from the stock. Now, when we talk about this stock-based approach, there are already questions running on our mind because we have been used at, uh, or rather we have we have seen tool paths uh, looking at the stock in roughing and rest roughing. Sometimes we see unnecessary tool paths coming up in regions where there was actually no real stock and still it gave us the tool path. So that skeptical uh, mindset was always there, especially when we're using stock. For roughing, that's perfectly fine because it's, it's not going to do any damage to a part, but in finishing, it can certainly hit uh, areas because 
when you're using a longer tool there's always a chance that there could be small set of vibration because of the overhang and if it goes on to areas that was already machined that can actually damage the surface that was already generated by that short tool but in solid cam this problem also has been taken care of in pro 3d hsm where the stock calculation is pretty accurate so we're going to look i'm just going to use the updated stock here auto updated stock and the tool path trimming criteria is based on the tool contact point and not the tool tip point uh, apart from that i'm not going to do any changes okay and i'll just save this tool path oh sorry i need to select the geometry save this okay save and let me run this calculation so it's already done the background calculation for the updated stock of the previous operations that was pretty quick you didn't even see it and now we are running the slicing of the areas where the stock was remaining <clears throat> Like I said, this is again a bit uh, tricky operation. Uh, that's the reason it's, it's taking uh, the time for calculation. That's the result, okay? Now, how do we know that this result is correct? I'm gonna switch on the previous operation so that you understand how accurately it has generated the tool path for regions where the material was still remaining I mean, you can really clearly see here operation end operation start okay so pro 3d hsm has got one of the best uh, stock detection models inside uh, its algorithm or inside its engine it's really got the most accurate uh, toolpath uh, uh, stock calculation probably in the industry and that is why you can see this result even on finishing okay generally nobody uses stock for finishing it's highly rare that people use stock for finishing and most of the times they just use it to check for collisions and other things but here we're using the stock as if this uh, as if it's like the accurate stock that has already been done by the previous toolpath and whatever stock that was remaining is now being handled by the second tool now here i can put another holder remember i can put another holder and i can put the tool let's say 15 millimeters more than what the previous tool was generate one set of tool path it will still have areas where it would have not entered i can put the third operation now without any holder or probably without taking the tool out again by even more amount of uh, the length increasing the length more than the previous one and generate the tool path till everything has been machined so this is one of the uh, this is one of the uh, standout features of pro 3d hsm okay now this is the solution if you uh, have a three axis machine but if you have a five axis machine you don't really have to do all this okay with five axis, you have got the ability to uh, tilt the uh, part and then do the machining for areas where uh, it was not uh, able to uh, go in simple three axis. So wherever it's unable to go in three axis, it will just shift to five axis. Now, how is this done? Previously, in the earlier versions of SolidCam, we had an option where we could generate the entire tool path without a holder then use a holder in the tool and convert the three axis tool path to five axis this was the option so we created one tool path and then it converted that and created a second tool path for five axis starting 2020 for sp2 it's still not fully available to the users but i'll show you a way in which you can open it up and start playing with this uh, tool path so i'm going to switch this two tool paths off yeah, work is done by the way the same approach is also taken for example uh, i can show you for linear 
uh, we can take the same approach. Uh, geometry, target, tool. Let's reduce this one. Uh, boundary is also fine. Let's save it and let's calculate this. Again, here I'm using uh, the uh, slope angle, 0 to 46. And we'll do this calculation quickly and then I'll show you the uh, how we open up that particular option of five axis milling in Turbo 3, uh, in Pro 3D HSM. So again, here you can see that it did not machine quite a few areas because there was collision, right? So now we would like uh, to uh, machine only those areas where there was collision. So I'll edit this, uh, switch on the target and go to the feed control. Okay, constraint boundaries, let's save this. Again here, uh, like you can see, I've switched on the respect stock model and calculate this tool path. Uh, another very important thing, since we are on the stage of calculation, I'll explain this and then I'll uh, tell you what I was going to talk about. So you can see that areas that were left out, so if I switch on the earlier toolpath, areas that were left out are being covered by the next tool which did not have the holder so you can see that it's done a pretty decent job in identifying areas and then machining them with the updated stock okay so this way you can use several different tools small medium long extra long remember the diameter in most of the cases i'll also explain to you this in most of the softwares when you use this finishing and you split the tool path, the diameter of the tool has to be same, right? The shape of the tool has to be same. Now, because here we are using a stock-based approach, I don't care about the next tool's diameter. Let's say I did well, the first machining with a six ball nose tool. The, sex, the, the second one, which uh, is a medium or a long length tool, probably is not six, it's 6.3, okay? Some crazy number. I can still use that and machine the areas that were not being able to be machined by the previous uh, tool. So here we are not restricted by the tool diameter, nor the, nor the holder type, nothing. We can still machine it using, uh, even let's say for a longer tool, I don't want to use a ball nose because ball nose sometimes gets unsteady at that length. They give a lot of vibration. So I would like to use a bull nose tool. I'm I'm allowed to use a bull nose tool even as, as as a next operation, okay? Because we are not doing trimming and then passing that untrimmed operation to the next tool. We are just creating a new operation based on the stock. Therefore, we remove the limitation of the tools and holders for the next operation. All right. Now coming to uh, uh, the next five axis stuff because today we are supposed to be talking about five axis in solid cam. So, under solid cam and settings in the B miscellaneous and then to beta options, we have an option called as turbo five axis milling. Now, when we release this totally, it will be called as uh, a pro 3D five axis milling, okay, or probably something to do with pro 3D HSM. So currently it's named as Turbo 5 Axis Milling. So enable this, click OK, and just restart Solid Cam. So when I add operations here, I should be able to see the Turbo 5 Axis Milling in my list of operations. So what I have here is I've already added because I brought it from the uh, uh, from the template. So I have the five axis, turbo five axis milling. Now, turbo five axis milling essentially is nothing but Pro 3D HSM, except for the fact that there is a tool axis control added inside Pro 3D HSM. Otherwise, it's exactly like Pro 3D HSM because it is Pro 3D HSM. 
right? Now, what are the strategies available for five axis? We have constant Z, constant Z rest finishing, linear, constant step over, constant step over, rest finishing, pencil, and then the combination tool parts of constant Z with linear and constant step over. So these operations like Pro 3D HSM are also available under the turbo five axis, uh, turbo five axis uh, milling uh, of, of solid camera. So what I have done here is I have added a constant Z rest finish just to show you the possibilities of what you can do with the uh, with solid cams uh, turbo five axis milling uh, so you have the tool here let me pick the target the tool here is uh, four four ball nose again i'm using the holder and with a shrink fit holder uh let's sorry for this because i changed the machine uh let's go to the tool axis control now in the tool access control, whatever default has been provided by us works absolutely fabulously in any of the parts. Why am I so confident? Because we have already done several trials with this particular uh, engine. That's why I'm super confident about uh, the uh, ability of the tool access to handle the uh, uh, situation. So, we use the tilted to axis by fixed angle. That's the first tool axis direction. And then in the collision avoidance, we have two types of collision avoidance system. One is the optimized collision free tilting, and the other one is dynamic collision free tilting. We advise you to use the dynamic collision free tilting always because it's much more powerful. But sometimes, rare occasions, 0.1% it may not work and that time you need to fall back on the optimized collision free tilting but otherwise 99.9% .9 of the time it works extremely well okay and um, that's it we just say tilt it to z axis maintain the tilt if you want you can switch on the uh, smoothing function oh, and that's it there's nothing else to be done in turbo 3d axis uh, in uh, in this particular option so i'll just save this and let's calculate so <clears throat> while it's calculating it's not allowing me the time okay i think it'll allow me the time to calculate to tell you what exactly i wanted to tell you while it's calculating i want to draw your attention uh, to the system configurations that are needed when you're running such paths on either five axis or on uh, three axis especially when you're running large complicated mo models using pro 3d hsm using the simultaneous five axis engine of solid cam there are two theories that we have seen here uh, i would say there are three theories not two there are three systems that we have tested it and all and all three systems have reported different kind of a feedback to us as far as the system configuration goes first one is the i7 processor i7 12th generation 11th 12th or 13th generation let's say when we calculate the toolpath reports x amount of time okay let's say in in a minute it just says it takes one minute to calculate on an i7 we have seen that when we go on an uh, i9 processor 11th 12th or 13th generation i9 processor that one minute drop drops down to approximately about uh, 40 45 seconds okay there is a dramatic fall but there's a third processor that we are super interested in and we, we are now trying to do a lot of uh, testing on that processor because it's really exciting and that's the amd ryzen 7 okay so when the pro <clears throat> the pro processors of uh, ryzen 7 and we have seen that whatever took one minute on uh, i7 and 40 to 45 seconds on i9 takes approximately 15 to 20 seconds on a ryzen 7 processor so it's really of great interest to us to see and work with this processor 
we would take approximately another month or two to come up with the actual recommendations but i'll tell you that ryzen 7 has really interested us it's uh, it's shown us great promise especially when it comes to number crunching so uh, we will come up with those results and uh, in one of the webinars that will happen after that we will be using that system and i will be showing you the results using the ryzen, ryzen 7 pro processor we have not checked on ryzen 9 i'm sure it will be better neither have we checked on ryzen 5 ryzen 5 is ruled out we are we are more focused or we are very interested on ryzen 7. so we have the toolpath here it's a rest machining toolpath using constant z and you can see that the toolpaths are pretty clean, neat, and decent calculations using uh, the Pro 3D HSM. And I'll go into my new simulation because I don't want to run the simulation completely. And I just want to put my tool somewhere here. And you can see that while it is calculating itself, it has done the tilting of the tool to avoid the collision of the holder with the part. So when it does the calculation itself, there is there are no two calculations. You calculate three axes and then convert it. Everything happens in one single uh, toolpath. Calculation, tilting, everything in one single toolpath. So you can now be rest be assured that you'll just create one toolpath and you'll have a five axis clean without any collisions toolpath in SolidCam like as if you're doing a three axis machining. Now the same thing I've uh, also applied here for uh, the turbo uh, constant Z. So let's open that. Uh, let's pick the geometry. So that's the target. The tool here is still the same. And uh, in the passes, you can see that the angle range is 45 to 90. Uh, tool axis control still the same. Let's save this and calculate this tool path. So this particular five axis milling is capable of doing what exactly three axis does, plus it goes a step further to give you the tilting in areas where holder is likely to collide or comes within the collision range or the clearance range that has been defined by the user and tilts the tool okay uh, we have done quite a lot of testing of this uh, product it's been in the beta for a long time but i think now it's time that people start playing with it remember it's still in beta that means it might still have issues but uh, i think it's giving us pretty good uh, results uh, so far so you can see again constant z this time there was nothing that was uh, uh, trimmed out because we're using five axis but you can see that there is a, a change in the direction here so this is the place where it's actually going to tilt so if i uh, show you the uh, simulation again so if i put my tool somewhere here it's still three axis okay because it's still uh ah, it's, there is a light uh, no it's still three axis now when i put the tool below somewhere here the tool is tilted because it's coming into the clearance range uh, where it uh, finds collision if it comes within that range it will tilt the tool so it can now create constant z toolpaths linear machining toolpaths constant z rest machining constant step over combination toolpaths using five axis you don't need any special skills no no special definition of uh, geometries to do tilting and other things simple straightforward tilting and you have the toolpath uh, ryzen 7 is of which generation i uh good question uh, uh good question marcin but i'm really not very sure but if you can write me an email i will send you the exact spec of the machine that we are testing this uh, product on because even i don't know which generation probably the latest i don't remember the number because i don't have it the system that i'm working today on is an i9 11th generation and here also we have seen substantial improvement in the calculation uh, speed of so in solid cam just moving on on one processor above so if you ask me at this moment 
which is the processor that we should look for, especially when we're doing really uh, medium size to large uh, mold and dyes or large aerospace components, I would say i9 is the best solution. Ryzen, please wait for us to come up with, uh, let's say, a concrete difference between Ryzen 7 and i9. Uh, we are seeing substantial difference, but we would like to check more paths and come up with something which is uh, where we are absolutely sure that this is a processor to go ahead with. Okay, I will write an email to you with the specs of the system. Right, so Turbo 5 axis, this is uh, what it can do. It can take your part, generate tool parts like it would do with, sorry, not this. Generate parts like it would do with three axis and apply the tilting in the tool path calculation stage itself along with the collision checking and give you a collision free tool path in five axis. So that's one part of our webinar today. So let's move ahead and see uh, uh, is it possible to split the tool path uh, with Pro 3D HSM at the moment? No. But even that feature is coming and it's coming in early next year. The possibility of uh, splitting or trimming a tool path and getting two different tool paths. So that's possible. But I know Ashok from where this question is coming. Trust me, whatever I have shown you today is way beyond what our competition is currently doing by splitting the entire tool path into several areas using the same tool. Okay, here you're not. Uh, you're not restricted to the same tool. You can change your tool, you can change your holder, you can change the type of tool. All this is possible with this particular uh, option that I've shown you because we are dependent now on the stock and not on really on the trimming of the tool parts. Let's move ahead uh, and look at something else. So let me open. Uh, what we are going to do now is, uh, sorry. Projects, webinar, multi-access. Uh, I'm going to show you something with Geodesic. What is, I mean, it's very simple, but since we are in this subject of showing you something new, I would like to show what's new in uh, Geodesic. So in Geodesic, we introduced a function where you have uh, a curve where you take surfaces, okay, this surface. Let me change the uh, color so that you know exactly what we are talking about. Mm, yeah. Oh, sorry. Let's come out of this. Okay. Um, it's not that, it's the body. Mm -hmm. Let's check, forget it, we are not. I'm talking about this surface, this one that was selected. So I'll change the color of the surface. Okay, I'm talking about this surface that was picked up. So if I edit, uh, if I edit the, uh, tool path so we have the surface that we just picked and then I have this curve okay this curve is a single curve now in geodesic we made this change that allows you to machine either on the left side or the right side of this curve need not you need not do anything special you just need one sketched curve and you can then specify on which side of the curve that you would like to machine so do you want on the left side, right side, or on both sides? So that's a pretty simple uh, uh, change that's been done in Geodesic. So if I calculate this tool path. <clears throat> so now it was uh, done on the left side. So let's change the color. This was T6. Change this to blue so that it's visible. Okay. so. That was a tool path, so it's generated on the left side of the tool path, depending on the direction it is moving. So we have got the left side 
and if I calculate the next operation it's going to be on the right side because I want to show you both so that's on the right side so you can specify on which side you want to machine or you could specify that I would like to machine on either side of this curve so this curve is not something that has been split by the surface it's just a sketch that is existing on the surface and now you can machine the entire surface by saying I would like to machine on the left side as well as on the right side this is in geodesic so this one small change in geodesic let's go to the next uh, part again in geodesic itself we're going to go into a function called as corner smoothing and I'll tell you one of the standout features of geodesic is its ability to uh, create excellent tool paths even on the most complex models okay for example now that i have this part here okay and what i've done is i've picked all these faces i have not defined any kind of geometry to drive it so within the tool path i have here is uh, surfaces so i've picked all these surfaces not the model and in the geometry curves i've set morph between two curves now which are the two curves i don't know because i did not define those two curves instead i defined something called as a medial axis uh, definition of the curve now what happens when you say medial axis now this part is slightly complex to understand but i'll try my best to explain to you when you say medial axis in geodesic, solid cam tries to find out the center curve of this particular set of surfaces that you have defined. So it finds the centermost curve and uses that as curve number one. So it starts with that medial axis, that becomes curve number one, and curve number two automatically becomes the outer boundary of these set of surfaces. So it does what we call as a morphing tool path between that medial axis and the outer boundary and then gives you the tool path for example we have got 0.5 step over in this case the tool i'm using is a six diameter ball nose and tool axis is simple three axis so what i'll do is simply calculate this tool path and i'll show you the result again very good example for die mold machining especially when you're doing such parts which are classic forging parts you can see that it used the medial axis as the first starting curve so if i zoom into the tool path you will see the medial axis here this this line or this particular strand of tool path is nothing but the medial axis of that particular geometry okay you can find it will find the medial axis of the geometry all the way down up to here so this becomes the first medial axis or this becomes the first curve for morphing and then it morphs all the way outside to the outside geometry to give you this excellent looking tool path okay once one engagement and one exit that's it there is no more no more uh, entry exits anywhere you can apply one way pattern zigzag pattern or spiral pattern for this particular tool path so the medial axis is a very powerful mechanism in which you can generate tool paths uh, for such uh, geometries using geodesic machining <clears throat> okay in geodesic itself let's open another uh, component and again the medial axis but this time this medial axis is slightly different okay this is not the medial axis that i just showed you in the curves we are going to use this function in a different way so again here i have a geodesic tool path and in this case it's all surfaces that were picked all these surfaces and uh, in the parallel uh, in the curve type we are used uh, or the pattern type we have used parallel to multiple curves and it automatically will find the machining area so the machining area it finds is basically the outer curve it finds and it tries to make the tool path parallel to the outer curve and converging to some point here okay 
that's how the pattern is going to come but my idea here is that we'll just calculate this tool path uh, before we do that i'm going to go into tool path parameters modify and i'm going to use round corners here and let's say my round corners is about 0 0.5 okay that's it let's save and calculate uh of course eric we can do uh from top to bottom from bottom to top both the cases you can do it in in uh, in geodesic because geodesic uses the same uh, functionality you go into the sorting and you flip the step over it will start from outside to in or if you flip this if it's starting from outside to in if you click flip step over it'll start from inside and it'll go outside okay so that's possible so now I created this tool path and uh, let's switch on the wireframe and I would like to show you the problems. The first problems, because I put corner rounding here, you can see the distance between these two step overs is huge. And when you actually take this part to go to the machine, you will see a lot of material being left out in this case here, here, and then finally here because it was unable to create that pass because of the rounding okay so when you have such a situation we can use the medial axis again okay now what happens here but the only uh, thing in medial axis is that this has to be zero you can't keep this in uh, 0.5 we'll have to make that zero and then switch on the medial axis so when we do the medial axis it will find the center path of each of those strands and extend the tool path in those regions so here once you click on the medial axis you get two options included within the contour or separate contour included within the contour creates a tool path exactly what you see in in turbo hsm especially when your step over is really big you have got the corner peg removing uh, pattern exactly that is what happens so let's use included in the contours and calculate this tool path so when I say included in the contours, what it will do is it will pull the tool path. Okay, it will pull the tool path into the area. And you can see that it created another tool path here. Okay. Now, if I change this mechanism from included in the contours to separate contours, click OK. Now what it will do is it will create additional passes or additional strand of tool path that is joining the center of these patterns to eliminate whatever little material that could be getting formed in between these two passes so it will finish this machining retract and then create the center line tool path or again what we call as the medial axis tool path it will create this medial axis tool path separately that's why that separate contours that means it's a separate tool path so wherever it is affecting all those areas it will create this medial axis tool path okay so another small but very uh, significant change in uh, in geodesic machining okay let's move ahead and uh, from geodesic we are going to move uh, to undercut machining. Very significant, uh, let's say, very significant uh, tool path. Okay. So let's open the first. Uh, where is my cursor? Okay. Sorry. Here it is. Go to open the part. Okay. So uh, let's edit this uh, part. And I'm going to go into the draft angle analysis. And you can see here, oh, the, it's pretty small, but it is minus one. So I'm going to say 0 0.5. And that's it. So we can see that these areas are not having positive draft. They're having undercuts. And it's approximately about one degree undercut. So when you have such paths which have positive 
and negative drafts in the same uh, geometry, we can use a new kind of a toolpath called as five axis undercut machining. So in five axis undercut machining in multi axis, <clears throat> okay, so here we have an option. First of all, picking the tool geometry is the same, like as if you're doing a three axis machining. The only difference is when we go into the passes, you have an option called as machine only undercuts. Okay, so it will find out, first of all, which areas are undercut and it will only machine those areas that are having an undercut in five axis. Okay, this is a five axis operation. For three axis, we already have an undercut machine milling uh, three axis. We are not talking about that. We are talking about five axis undercut machining. So, again, so sorry. So again, in undercut, because people ask, where is this? So in undercut milling, we have got three axis and then we have the multi-axis. So we are looking at the multi-axis option. Three axis has been around for quite a long time and uh, you can uh, use it safely. It's been there for a pretty long time. It works very well. Again, the three axis undercut machining is based on the Pro 3D HSM engine. So it's uh, very well uh, tested and uh, Several parts have been cut on that, so there's nothing, uh, no issues. So I'm using the machine only undercuts and in the tool axis, like I said in the previous one, uh, previous turbo five axis milling, we use the tilted to axis by fixed angle and we're tilting it to the Z axis. Let's click on maintain tilt. That's uh, switched on and the smoothing is on. So let me save this. Uh, what happens here? Okay, this is done. So let's calculate this toolpath. So you can see that the toolpath now has been generated and only the areas that were undercuts or that were uh, having negative draft have been machined. So if I run the simulation, Okay, let's run the simulation. The first pass obviously will have very less tilt because it's just on the side and then it will start tilting. So if you can look, it will start tilting. This tilting is done again automatically. We don't need to do any uh, definitions as such. We just said tilted to Z axis and it will apply that tilt automatically. Collision checking is done automatically. Everything happens almost automatically okay so uh, that's about this toolpath where it says machine only undercuts but you can also ask for the toolpath where it will not just machine undercuts but machine the entire part you also with the undercuts around so it will consider the geometry with undercuts and machine those areas so if i calculate this operation And now run the simulation here. Again, the first one is having a very small tilt. Now, the best part, there are only two areas where there was undercut, right? So obviously the other areas are simple three axis. So ideally what it should have done or what it should do is that all the area other areas it should do three axis and when it comes to this area it should tilt and do five axis theoretically speaking that's a correct way but when you look at a practical approach to it this is not the right way because you will have a lot of major tilting happening in a very small area okay that can sometimes ruin the part itself so instead of that what solid cam does is it takes the tilt that is available on the undercut area and applies that entire tilt to the full part or applies the tilt to the entire part thereby machining the entire part in five axis even though theoretically speaking we did not need five axis in those areas we could have done three axis and just tilted when there was a collision with the holder but here what it is doing is it's using the 
tilt of the undercut area and then applying it to the entire part so the entire part will be now done in five axis including the undercut area so it will also consider the undercut area now this was a simple example a bit complex example could be uh, a part uh, from aerospace let's say a small part from the aerospace it's open okay we can open this slightly complex that's it's not very complex so Calculate the first tool path. It's machining. This is straight. So if we edit this part and do an evaluation of the draft angle analysis, you'll see that this area is an undercut, whereas this area is int an undercut. So we have the first tool path where it is doing both the undercut regions as well as the regions where we have positive draft. And the second one, I have just said machine only the undercuts. So if I calculate the second tool path, it will only machine the undercuts. Okay. Now, did you notice another thing when I said calculate, the tool path is displayed instantly? Okay. How did that happen? Why did it not run the calculation and take at least five, six seconds to do the calculation of this part? Now, this is another very interesting uh, feature. It's there inside the software, but you can't see it. You can only feel it. It's called as toolpath caching. We store all the results of the toolpath into the cache area of our engine. And when there is a change, like I explained in my last webinar, when there is a small change, like for example, uh, the changes in, in the step over, okay? We just recalculate the areas affected by that particular uh, change and then display the toolpath. So the recalculations of most of the toolpaths in solid cams, solid cam now are pretty quick. If the change isn't affecting the entire part, if it's just affecting the local uh, area, we just do the calculations there and that's it. The toolpath is displayed to the user. That's why you're not seeing any kind of lag in our calculation. When I click calculate, it just shows up the results. Uh, another example now this is slightly complex so, okay so another example where we can show you the uh, undercut machining is this part here now I have a part that has got a cavity inside and this is a very strange looking cavity so if I again uh, do the uh, I'll edit this part and show you the draft angle analysis you can see that it's a bit crazy it's having undercut here it's, it's straight then some portion it has an undercut and then there is an undercut here so when i want to machine such a pocket using a generic five axis or even geodesic it's actually a, a laborious uh, uh, process you have to pick the surfaces you have to specify your tilting uh, direction and all those things but with the undercut machining i just pick the entire model i select the boundary for it to be machined so i've here what i've done is i've picked a big circle and said okay within the circle whatever you find you can machine and what it does is this beautiful tool path I can see a lot of my customers' components itself are qualifying for this particular toolpath engine. They may not need the classic five axis approach to uh, machining such areas. They can still use, they can use the undercut uh, machining uh, uh, engine and generate the toolpath. <clears throat> okay first of all pretty neat toolpath looks very nice okay you can run the simulation it's 
It's a very small tool. And what you can see here is that SolidCam has already found out the best possible approach angle to this particular uh, part or this particular area. And it's machining now using this particular area. As much as possible, it will use or it will do with this particular approach angle. Now, there will be, of course, uh, geometries inside or there will be situations where this approach angle is not enough. So that's where it starts tilting the tool, okay? So it does a pretty neat job when machining such uh, areas. So now it started tilting because that approach angle no longer is valid because the geometry inside is strange. It's it's having a lot of uh, different angles. So it's now starting to tilt. Right, so that was about undercut machining. Uh, this is again open to users. It's not hidden by any uh, beta options. It's completely open. Uh, can we limit the toolpath? Oh, yeah, 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 Sasha, you're right. I, I did not want. Da, 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 da. Let me go back. You don't want to damage the edge. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Maybe we did not include, but yes, Sasha, you were asking me about the rolling. So we are going to have the edge rolling soon on this. It's already there. We just need to implement it inside our GUI, but we do have an option to uh, uh, limit the rolling. We call it edge rolling. So if you switch that edge rolling off, it will automatically go below the edge and start below the edge, like how simultaneous five axis does. Currently, you can do that a bit manually by defining uh, the limits by yourself. You can specify a smaller limit uh minus let's say point minus 0 0.3 0 0.4 and it will not touch the edge it will start directly below the edge okay but it's coming up soon that we will have the edge rolling option inside uh, this particular toolpath good <clears throat> let's <clears throat> move ahead from undercut five axis we will uh, take it to the next one and that's in uh, Swarf. It's not multi access machining. I'm so sorry. It's about swarfing. <clears throat> so we made uh, another change to the swarfing engine. So let's say you want to uh, swarf this, all these faces and you don't want to remove the material in one go and you want to take several passes. Earlier, we had that uh, thing that if I edit this, I mean, if I go to the toolpath parameters, we had this one way or zigzag. So we had this one way option. And if I calculated the toolpath, <clears throat> So when you calculate the toolpath, we used to get this step over kind of a thing in the toolpath and it used to machine and remove the material. But with uh, SP2, we have the option of defining a spiral. You don't need one way or zigzag and we can calculate this toolpath. Okay, now this has been converted into spiral. So you don't have that step over anymore. It's just a simple spiral that is getting wound on the surfaces while machining the faces on the side. So this is how it will run. It's a simple spiral. It'll just keep spiraling around the part while removing the material on the walls. Now this spiraling technique is not just available on the bottom floor, but it's also available when you're doing the depth. OK, 
Okay, so if I calculate this operation, it's also available when you're doing the depth. You can see now no more there are depth of cuts. It is just a simple spiral going around the walls. So the spiraling is now available to you uh, for the uh, walls also. Okay, so that's again something that we introduced in SP2. Uh, moving ahead, uh, the last one, in fact, we are now going to uh, go into the edge breaking. Okay, let's use this. So we have made changes to the uh, edge uh, edge breaking uh, uh, tool path, especially when you're using the conical tools or taper tools or the chamfer uh, tools. The kind of uh, result that you get now with in SP2 with the conical tools is much better than what you would see even in SP1 or SP0 of 2024, because we have made a, quite a lot of change to our engines where we we have extremely small amount of retracts when we are using the uh, conical tool. So let's uh, go here. Tool. Is it mounted? Yeah, it's already mounted. So let's run the simulation. Let's run the simulation. So the conical tool now has got very less retracts compared to uh, 2023 or even the 2024 SP1 or SP uh, SP1 or SP0. That's because we have made the handling of the corners much more better with 2024 SP2. They've made those changes again with the engine so that you get a much better tool path when using such tools, the conical tools. Good, so uh, I believe uh, these were all the changes that we have done in uh, 2024, starting from SP0 till SP2. SP2, like I said, some changes are, are like tangible. You can see those in front of you. Some are not tangible, like the one that I showed when you start an operation, it loads up instantly. So those are the changes that we did in the back. Uh, I must commend Gennady for this, for finding out the solution and uh, figuring out what needed to be fixed and fixing it and giving us this amazing version where most of those performance related issues got sorted out. Right, uh, so that's, uh, that's about it. And uh, quite a few of you, I'll be meeting you in uh, Rosenheim and, and on 23rd, 24th, and 25th. And uh, we're going to talk more about 5-axis, especially with some of the uh, interesting uh, uh, work that we have done with uh, several large uh, companies. We're going to be presenting it in that conference. So uh, I hope to see you there. And if you have any questions, I would be more than glad to answer those questions. You can write to me. Everybody knows by now my email address. In event you don't know, it's my first name, dot last name at solidcam.com, amod.onkar at solidcam.com. You can write to me and I'll be more than glad to uh, help you around. Uh, and uh, to uh, Marcin, I'm going to send you the <clears throat> processor uh, uh, version so that uh, if you can get yourself, a, you can get a hand on one of those uh, systems of Ryzen 7, you can also check the performance of the toolpath on, on the Ryzen 7 tool uh, engine, uh, on the Ryzen 7 processor, sorry. All right, thank you very much for joining this webinar and patiently listening to it. And I'll see you uh, in uh, in one of our, another different uh, a series of webinars which we're going to have and for those people who are part of the five axis training series of webinars we're going to meet again on friday where we're going to talk about geodesic machining thank you very much and uh, let's hope we'll see you again thank you bye-bye